It is February 2nd, 2014. We're going to take a look at Edmund Husserl and his book Ideas, published in 1931. It is the foundation of just about all postmodern thinking. Uh, more than that, but to, it did involve, it does function as a substrate of all postmodern thought. And Husserl discusses the modalities of being and says that we first should understand the modalities of being after we understand the modalities of being, we can discuss a new metaphysic of existential being, but not until we first understand its earlier stages of development, which deal with phenomena and the pure ego, and the pure experiential ego without the false uh, imposition of a previous knowledge or previous metaphysics. Our previous ontology, we need to strip all that away, and we need to uh, suspend all cognitive activity and strictly be involved in the experiential. So he's very strict on a philosophy of modalities, and through his philosophy of modalities, we can get a pure understanding of an event, and we will allow it to speak for itself and not impose our own idea of what essence means. Because his is a phenomenology of essence, he seeks to unveil the noam. Well, I'll give you the order of how he wants to do his phenomenology. It'll help you to understand better, but it is a phenomenology of essence. But he's going to seek essence in uh, the stages of its emergence. Essence first uh, will emerge as noamatic design elements, and then the nomadic design elements can be gathered together to inform a universally absolute Greek idos overarching form essence, the idos form, and that idos form can actually even be conceived of as a thought picture to uh, stimulate and inform uh, the subject of body state. And then we'll move on to the actual uh, quasi-conceptual stage, the proto-conceptual stage of uh, the doxa essence. So we'll go from noema to idos to doxa, from noema, which simply means design form, to idos, which means universal overarching form, to doxa, which is, we discussed before, it's the actual, the bulges of the radiance of spirit, true signification of spirit of deeper meaning, the true signifying event. But we can't start there like a lot of uh, writers want to. Husserl says we can get there at the end of the preliminary work, and then his philosophy ends where everybody else wants to start. He ends at the access point, and then he says, then you move into cognitive work with the uh, doxa signs. But he's interested in, in taking us there. There's been enough written about uh, the cognitive side, he thinks. So he wants to work on the modalities. So he is going to work on a phenomenology of essence because he believes there is a noomatic sphere that runs parallel to the experiential sphere of finitude. And so there's a thread. There's a, a thread of universality, a thread of essence that runs through all of experience. And we want to focus, he says, on these uh, phenomenological spheres of nomadic forms of design that will order themselves according to their own imminent structuring, which they possess and do not need us to, Im to impose on them, and that these uh, nomadic design forms and their ordering will be lingering in the background of the situation that we are involved in, and that's called a fringe area, and for a hustle, all situations are encircled by a fringe area. And this fringe area is a primordial area for every situation. It cannot be avoided. It's an experiential fact. 
that uh, no situation is presented in purity. It is bordered on all sides, and it is uh, hampered on all sides by some lingering forms of uh, other events that touch it, other situations that touch it, or past situations that are still lingering in a society's memory, or even the entire history of uh, structural forms that still linger. So this fringe environment is a fringe environment that uh, we never get rid of. It's in every uh, fusus physiological presentation. There's a, a primordial fringe, and the primordial fringe does qualify us. It does limit us, and we want uh, to find an emergence beyond the limit point. Well, the limit point now, according to Husserl, is this fringe attachment. We want to uh, emerge past that by tangentially appropriating the nomadic sphere and the uh, background imminent essence that is uh, tangentially present in every situation. So it is very much a philosophy of looking at these modalities in order to appropriate essence because his philosophy is all about essence. There is an imminent essence present in every situation, but not as a thing, but as a uh, parallel sphere of uh, design, a parallel sphere of noema. They're not doxa uh, in the beginning because we're simply experiential egos in the beginning. We're pure egos, and the pure ego deals with these very fundamental design elements, these noema. And uh, it's only later that we can group the uh, event noema together to form an IDAS thought picture, and then we can move on to doxa. So he begins with a true beginning. He begins, begins with the modality of epake, and that is from the Greek apeko, which means to hold back all conceptual judgment. We begin by bracketing everything that everyone else wants to start with, and that's to jump in with all kinds of conceptual ideas. That gets put on hold. We hold that all back in a, an attitude of epake from the uh, apeko in Greek, a holding back of all conceptual work, all conceptual judgment. And he calls us the living now. The living now has an objective appearing with its fringe data of past forms that are still lingering and simultaneous presentations that uh, touch it on all sides. And we are also uh, in the uh, primordial living now with our subjective glance, our directed glance toward the situation, which can be straight on or it can be tangential, touching on these fringe areas. But it is an ex experiential ego and not a conceptual ego. And then key in this uh, living now, there is one fringe area called the background fringe, which contains possibilities for a universality of IDAS. The background fringe does contain possibilities for a universality of the Greek IDAS overarching form. There is the possibility of singularity. So that's key for Husserl. He does believe there is the possibility, even in the very beginning, the possibility does uh, objectively exist in the background for an IDAS universality of deeper spiritual meaning. Every situation carries that potential within itself. Spirit is possible. Spirit is a possibility. Now we transfer to the remembrance modality, which uh, leaves the physiological fusus and moves into the background and the foreground and starts looking at the background and the foreground to see if we can start uh, grasping some of these uh, noema, these uh, design signs, not really radiant signs of spirit, but these uh, design elements of kind of a kind of the trajectory of the event. And so we begin in the background area, and the background area we take up the uh, art of standing in, 
which is uh, always discussed in postmodern thought. And we are converted by what uh, Husserl calls background stirrings. They aren't the docks of bulge of spirit. They aren't that pronounced. He says at this stage it's just background stirrings that uh, our art of standing in the existential stance, the existential uh, point of view, can view and understand these background stirrings of deeper noomadic meaning. And so when we do cross over into the foreground, we're really uh, looking at intended areas and we're suspending other areas. We're suspending value judgments, we're suspending conceptual transcendence, we're suspending formal logic, and we're intending theoretical glance and descriptive activity rather than a cognitive interpretation. And then we'll approach our uh, foreground and we will work through a five step process of unveiling the noema signs and their distinct identity. And then we will uh, notice, notice that they each have a, a shared nucleus of a deeper meaning. And then we will layer them in a hierarchy in an unconscious kind of a way of just a, attributing greater significant, significance to some and lesser significance to others. But by doing this uh, unconscious hierarchy type of work, we will eventually filter out the non-essential. We will come to an understanding of a singularity uh, of the noema event or the event noema as opposed to the singularities of noema. So it's, they're not doxa, but it's a similar type structuring. It's a group of, a lexical group of noematic design signs, not a signification pointing signs that point to spirit, but uh, there is a lexical content of a noema elements, noema signs in a plurality. And we will unconsciously and in an analogous way we'll develop a hierarchy, we'll stack them, and we will eventually filter out the non-essential finite material and arrive at what we will call the event noema, which is an abbreviation of the design otherness for the entire emerging event. Pre-language, pre-conceptual, uh, but we're ready to enter into the world of imagination. Because once we've done this unveiling, once we have a, a lexical content, even though it's a design content, it is a lexical, even if it's pre-language, it is a lexical content of uh, design pictures, but they need to be ordered in some way, and so we need the use of the imagination. And that's the next modality, the modality of the imaginative, where we're going to work on the IDOS form, and the IDOS form engages uh, a workspace in memory. So it's going to, we're going to have an internal dialectic between uh, the memory of our accumulated event noema. Because we're going to store more than one event. We're going to continue to store our experiences. The neurons are going to continue to record these event noema. Eventually we'll have an accumulated cluster of these event noema, not just the plurality of noema, but uh, we'll have a plurality of event noema. And we'll be able to move to another level yet of a overarching, abbreviating Greek idos form. And the Greek idos is the all-encompassing universality that uh, will enclose all events. So it's, it, it, uh, it's a leap beyond a singularity of an event. It encloses all events. It's the universal of the universal. It's the idos, the Greek idos of overarching universality. But we form that through uh, retentions, through the uh, dialectical retention of event noema that we accumulate over and over and over again as we work through this uh, noetic process that began with the uh, the living now and our subjective glance. So once we form this uh, 
IDOS form as a thought picture, which uh, Hustle calls it a heavy sign. It's it, it gets really it's a, just a an abbreviation for all of the plurality of event noema. We're ready to transfer to the fourth modality, and that is the modality of signification. We actually enter into the world of DOXA signs, where everybody else starts. This is where a Hushrel finishes. Now, the way he looks at it, he says this modality is reached through um, a methodology of a triad of uh, the recollection of all of the nomadic, nomadic design elements, and they all contain what he says are proto-DOXA. They do include within themselves kind of a uh, pre-emerging signification, but now it's ready to reach signification. So we, re we first have the recollection of all the nomadic design elements and their proto-DOXA, and then we have a second moment of the visualization through negation of all modality content, which will leave only the proto-DOXA content. So we uh, negate we now we're at a stage of negating modality in the previous stages to reach the protodoxa content. And that becomes a new modified object. So let's look at this stage, which is very important to Husserl. First of all, the protodoxa, when a modality is negated, all positive meaning is removed from earlier stages. Modality becomes a not being. And a Pneumatic fullness emerges as protodoxa content, and new modifications evolve in uh, their original doxa mode. The self stands in toward this domain, exploring the new relational possibilities between all of these new, pure doxa, protodoxa. Now, there are four preparations for this uh, moment to occur. There are the previous modalities of the primordial, the remembrance, and the imaginative. There is a, the realm of the unmodified being, which uh, Husserl calls core meaning, which is uh, kind of runs parallel to the entire process, and it is developed out of uh, the continuing, ongoing existential inter interrogation of the self by universality, as we work through all these modalities. So there's also the conditioning by the unmodified being. And then there's the, uh, the picture out of uh, the imaginative modality that we now possess. The copied imaginative thought picture. The noema are enchained together. And subsystems and essential lines are drawn together. A system is copied out of that uh, IDAS thought picture. The system is copied into consciousness uh, as an overall systematic unity and is a systematic unity of sign-like DOXA elements. So we have taken these uh, nomadic characters and we have uh, translated nomadic characters into proto-doxa visualization and from proto-doxa visualization into true doxa signs. So from nomadic character, proto-doxa visualization to true doxa signs organized in a new relational systematic diagram by the self. But this sits uh, not on the unconscious side. It doesn't sit on the conscious side. It basically takes us to what Husserl calls the uh, positional modality. And that is, uh, we discuss this with uh, Ponty, Merleau Ponty, but it's the axis. It is the th axis threshold. And uh, Husserl calls this the uh, positional subjectivity. And it is here where we are engaged in that pivotal work of either a positional act of positing doxa on the cognitive side or a neutrality act of reacquainting ourselves with the otherness 
of the noema, the purity of the pure ego, being reacquainted with the otherness of the noema. So we, either, we can turn back to the unconscious neutrality act, or we can turn forward to the positional act of actually positing these doxa in a cognitive work. And so you can see this is very much the, well, it fits anybody precisely. It fits uh, Merleau Ponty. This is very close to Ponty, but uh, it shows us that uh, for Husserl, he ends where the others begin. You know, Merleau Ponty began with the axis threshold, and Edmund Husserl ends at the axis threshold. His emphasis is uh, modality, 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 and then. I'll turn it over to others because there's been enough work on the cognitive already. We need to deal with phenomenology. So he takes us to this axis point, but we, we arrive there with a true conversion of all of the nomadic characters to uh, protodoxa and then to true doxa signs and their bulging presence emerging in the situation. So we enter into consciousness with a, a, the uh, starting point that we usually confront in postmodern thought of uh, looking at bulging doxa signs in a situation that want to emerge.